open, just standing with the feet together and the heels apart to get the, that opening right in through your hips. So that's one thing that I always emphasize. Instead of having the heels together, which will actually turn your sacrum in, you want to have your heels out. So it's kind of like the opposite of dance. And then your shoulder blades come back, and that's why I like to have you do this. And if you can also notice that the rib cage comes up and it's a little bit of a press back, now that right away will draw the chest back. Then you've got more space in between the ribs and the hips, as I keep emphasizing. That's the Uddiyana Bandha. Bandha is a lock, and it's a space in here that cultivates the bigger breath. But whenever you're standing, and I used to do this every day, whenever you're standing, if you can practice this, you'll look like somebody very official. I used to have people stare at me like, who is she? Um, and I would do it on the subway platform for about six months. And um, what, I, what you're doing is this. So here's Tadasana, mountain pose from the side. You've got a nice plumb line that you're leading up right from the center of the head. And the chin is back slightly. And the arms actually direct down. So you're not just there, you're actually pressing the arms down. And that drives your shoulders down. And that's Tadasana. And that's the pose that you start with and you return to whenever you're standing. So the style of yoga that we do, which is a combination of Hatha and Ashtanga, is a constant tadasana. So you might be folding in tadasana, you might be turning in tadasana, but you don't collapse the bunda. So you keep this area lengthened. So let's start. Let's start right at the front of the mat and have the balls of the feet together. Come on into the tall tadasana. Feel the shoulders press back and we'll begin. Breathe in, bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward, forward bend. I'm going slow today, my back is tight. Breathe in, come halfway up, just touch. Place the hands down in your forward bend. Jump or step the legs back, turn into your side plank, open the chest, keep the chin in slightly. And then take the arm in line with the ear for a second breath, reach out and then breathe in, come all the way back. Rotate to the other side, opening the chest. Draw that shoulder blade over, lengthen from the waist, beautiful reach, and then extend that arm down. And now you can come right out from the hips, press the heels out, and now take the feet together and do just a tiny turn. So you're not gonna come on the outside blade of the foot, but you're gonna stay in the tops of the toes and practice a Tadasana with the ribs pulled up and back and you get that feeling of supporting the back from the inside. And do that a couple times. Couple more. Last one. Now bend the knees, keep the toes tucked, exhale, chip. Send the hips forward and the elbows are back. Now point the toes and breathe in and press into the palms. You're coming up about three inches as you press the tops of the feet down in Sphinx. One more breath as you're sending the chest forward and the elbows back. And then you can exhale, child's pose the back back. Release the weight of the forehead to the floor if you can get down. And pull the bum back all the way to the heels if you can. Stay with nice deep breaths. And then one more breath, lengthening and pulling the core in on the exhale. And then come on back up, take the hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes under, inhale, lift the eyes, and then exhale and rise into your downward dog. Let your head dangle, pull up from the core, let the heels drop, lengthening the spine. Now do a gentle turn of the head from side to side, lengthening right through the whole cervical spine and then come back to your center now come up onto the toes onto the balls of the feet just that just really stretch through the base of the toes get the heels as high as you can now today we're going to step the right foot forward in between the hands coming forward keep the hands on either side of the feet and then pull your right waist back and you're gazing towards the big toe, pull up through that right thigh. And then we're going to bend that front leg and now take the left leg in. 
Then breathe in, come halfway up, and then exhale and fold forward. Breathe in, lift, coming all the way up, opening through the chest, and then you can exhale the hands to center. And inhale, gazing up, open the chest. Exhale, fold forward, forward bend. Breathe in, come halfway up, flat back. Exhale, fold forward, planting the hands. Step the legs back, rotate into your side plank, opening the chest. Keep the chin in as you reach the arm up. And then taking the arm in line with the ear, you wanna reach. And then you can windmill that arm around, rotate to the other side, opening the chest, draw the shoulder back. And again, lengthen right in line with the ear, get a good reach with that arm out. And then you can windmill the arm around. And then come on back to the center. And now reaching the heels out, we'll stay in plank, keep the rib cage pulled in. Now take the feet to the outside edges and then pull up through the rib cage a little more. Send the heels back so you really plank the legs, even the backs of the knees stretch. And then step the feet together and then wide and together and wide ribs in and together. And last one, wide. Now together, bend the knees, toes tuck, extend the rib cage forward. Now keep, take the elbows into the side body, hands come up to the neck. Press down into the elbows, sphinx the body up, and then straightening the arms a little more and keep the elbows slightly bent in a baby cobra, so not too far up. Then from there, you exhale, child's pose back. Your arms are going to be way forward, your bum high so it won't come all the way back. Tuck the toes under once again and stretch through the upper back. Take two more breaths. Lengthening the spine. The core is really pulling back in order to keep the head off the floor if you can. Otherwise, let the forehead come down. And then on the next inhale, walk the hands right under the shoulders and gaze up, lift the eyes, and then you can exhale and rise into your downward dog. Get the bum bones lifting as the heels drop and the inner thighs move back. Keep the shoulder blades sliding down. Good, and three more breaths, keeping that lift of the bum bones high. Legs strongly pulling up. Shoulder blades slide down. And then you can gaze up, come up onto the tiptoes, step the feet forward to the hands, come on halfway up, and then exhale, fold forward. Breathe in, scoop the arms up, bring the palms together, and then exhale the hands to center. And again, inhale, gazing up, open through the chest. Exhale, fold forward, forward bend. Breathe in, come halfway up, lift. And then exhale, fold. Plant the hands, send the legs back. Turn into your side plank. Take an inhale, open the chest. Now this time, take that left leg behind. Come up on the, to the toes, bend the knee. And then get more of a uh, turn back and you've got a wider base to get the ribs back and more open through the chest and shoulder. And that might help Julian for your arm to come a little bit further back. And then you can take that left arm down, rotate to the other side, open the chest, draw the shoulder back. Breath, shoulder stays down. Now take the foot behind, point the toes. That helps to tip the hip, the ribs. The chin is in a little, the eyes lift up. So that way you keep the neck long and then you can come back. From here, come on into your plank, reach out through the heels, keep the rib cage pulled in. Now you can take the legs wide, send the heels back, breath, breath, and then you can step the feet together. We're gonna do this two more, so bring the feet outside edges of the mat, try not to move the bum too much, and then draw together. And last time, coming wide. Now stay in the wide and touch the right knee down and straighten. And then the left and straighten, core strong. Right and straighten, left and straighten. Two more, right and left. 
Good, step the feet together, keep the toes tucked, push the chin up as you send the ribs forward. Take the hands high, elbows tuck into the side to press into your sphinx, lifting the rib cage, and then pressing into the palms, coming up into a bent elbow cobra, and you're lifting the eyes, the shoulders are back, one more breath. Then you can lower down, take the hands back under the chest, exhale and child's pose back just for one breath this time, releasing the forehead. And then you can breathe in, take the hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes under, inhale, arc the back and lift and rise into your downward dog. Again, the inner thighs are moving back as the heels drop, spine is long, Getting that lift. Good. Keep the core pulling in. Stay with your breath. And then one more breath, pulling the bum bones up a little higher if you can, and then gazing up. Now here's where we step the left leg forward in between the hands, bring it all the way forward, pull the left thigh back as you reach out over the left leg with the body, hands even on either side as you pull that left waist back. And then you can step, bend the front left knee, and then you can step that right leg forward, you're in forward bend, exhale, fold. And then breathing in, lift, bring the arms up, bring the palms together, and then exhale the hands to center. And again, inhale, gazing up, open the chest. Exhale, fold forward, forward, bend. Breathing in, come halfway up, just touch. Exhale, fold forward, planting the hands, step the legs back. Again, come into your side plank, take an opening, take the shoulder back. And once again, step that top foot back, come on onto the ball of the foot, lift the rib cage, opening the chest. And then you can take that left arm down, breathe in, lift, draw the shoulder blade back, and now touch the toe, lift the hip, drawing back, open the rib cage. And then you can take that hand down. Now we're going to come down to the elbows. And then from here, you're going to lift up, lift the eyes and arc the back. This is like a, a shorter cat pose that you're doing the dog tilt first. And now you exhale round the spine and press the tops of the feet into the floor. And then breathe in and lift the eyes, stick the bum bones up. And then exhale and round the spine, just looking straight back. And breathe in, lift the eyes, arc, bum high. And then exhale and round. And then come to a neutral spine. Lift the left heel out, press it back, stretching through the calf, and then take the right heel to meet it and press it back, and then pull the hips forward, coming into a strong squared plank. And keep the ribs lifting, keep the heels reaching back, shoulder blades are sliding down. Strong with the breath, keep the core pulled up and in, and keep that heel reaching back. So you're steady, breath, breath, breath. And then you can lower, come into your sphinx, point the toes this time, and press the elbows down, taking one more breath. You might wanna tuck the pubic bone under to get the spine long. And then on your inhale, extend up into a short arms bent cobra. Lifting the eyes, one more breath. Now you can bend down onto the elbows again. Walk the knees in, take the hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes under, take an inhale, lift the eyes, and then exhale and rise, lift into your downward dog. Get the bum bones lifting as you lengthen through the spine. Breath. Breath. Good, and two more breaths. Keeping the lower core pulling up as you extend back. The crown of the head is reaching down, so you've got that pyramid shape of the bum high, the head drops. 
And then we're gonna gaze up, come up onto the tiptoes, step the feet forward, come on halfway up, flat back, and then exhale, fold forward. And now breathe in, bring the arms up overhead, bring the palms together, and then exhale the hands to center. Okay, lovely. Now we'll take the right arm up and you can take the hand across to grab onto the elbow, get a really nice rise from the rib cage. Take that hand onto the back, take the other hand around, potentially reaching through the fingers if you can. Press the elbows back. And if you're not reaching the fingers, it's okay. Just keep the hand with the thumb on the outside, that'll open the shoulder, and then press the elbows back. From your nice tall Tadasana, so that tall lift, exhale over to the side and keep the elbow pressing back as you lift. Keep the underside waist on this side rising as you keep the rib cage opening and the breathing is full. Breath. And then you can breathe in, come on all the way back up. Now just press the elbows back and lift the chin. But keep the rib cage pressed in. Arc slightly. So you're pressing the elbows back. Press the hips forward now in an actual arc. And breath. Opening through the abdominal wall. Breath. Breath. Keep the elbows pressing back. And then you can center so the elbows come back in. And then you're changing arms. And then taking this hand well behind. Lift through this arm grabbing on, press the elbows back, get the uh, feet just a tiny bit apart, lift from the rib cage, press the elbows back, gaze up, exhale over to the side, keep that elbow pressing back as the rib cage is lifted, stay breathing steadily, breath, 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 good, keeping the elbow back, Good, now here we keep that, the elbows pressing, pull up from the ribs, arc the back, gazing up, get the shoulders back, keep the elbows pressing, lift from the ribs, breath, breath. And then you can come back to your center, take the arm behind, now step your left leg forward, the right leg is back, take an inhale, lift the eyes, and then exhale and extend forward. You can come down, my back is tight, so I want you to come down and bring the chest right down alongside, um, right in, on the leg or close to the leg as the wrists reach out. And then you come forward, and if your back is tight like this, then you can do a small reach out until you can feel that back will give you the range. Sometimes as you keep breathing, you'll get the range. Reaching. And one more breath, keeping the shoulders reaching down. And then you can breathe in, lift. We rotate to the other side. Hips are squared to the other side. Lift the rib cage, lift the chest, and then exhale and extend out over that right leg. You can reach the wrists up, pulling up through the upper thigh on that right side. Get over the chest. Again, keep pulling up on the right side. Breathing, drop the chin so the top of the head is reaching to the floor if you're down. And if you're up, keep the chest reaching out. Breath. Keep the wrists reaching. And then you can breathe and lift. Come all the way back up. Now we'll turn to come right back to the front of the mat. Take the hands to the elbows, lift the rib cage, open through the chest and then step the feet apart and exhale and fold forward right into your forward bend. Keep the chin reaching out. So you're gonna keep the eyes lifting to stretch through the upper back. And if you can bring your hands into prayer position, please do and press the elbows back as you keep the chin lifted and you keep pulling up through the legs. So you get the bum bones lifting high with the elbows pressing back and you're breathing steadily. And one more breath. 
Now then you can take the hands to the floor, have them just in front of the feet. And if you need to bend your knees, that's great. Now we'll take the left leg back for a low triangle. The left foot comes back. You turn that left heel out 45 degrees. Keep the front right knee bent and then turn and come to your left. Keep that left shoulder drawing back as the chin is in and you turn. Push into the hand on the floor to get that rotation and keep the waist coming back. Open the ribs and keep rotating the body to the side. Keeping your breathing constant. Okay, now you can take that hand down. We're gonna walk this over to the other side. Turn the right foot parallel. Turn the left toes to face the opposite direction, left hand on the inside, and then turn and rotate to that side. Keep your front left knee bent. Keep pulling the right waist back. So you can see it's not too much of a bend, so you're not reaching forward. You still have your right hip back to get that triangle back. And keep the top right hip pulling back with the breathing. Opening the chest. Breath. Breath. One more breath. Okay, good. Now we're gonna turn, come on all the way back to the front. Turn the right toes forward. Bring your left leg further back about eight inches. Press the heel back and keep that front right knee directed in. Pull in through the rib cage. And now take your left hand in close, turn to the right and draw that right shoulder blade back. Keep the front right knee directed forward as the chest is open. Breathing is steady. Breath. Breath. And then you can take that right hand down. Take the left hand wide. We're going to change legs. Taking the right leg back, left leg forward, both hands on the inside of the left leg. Press that right heel back. Notice if you need to wiggle the foot back a bit more. Keep the front left knee directed in and touching your shoulder. Lift the chin, back leg is strong. Breath. Keeping the in and out breath. And again, it's like you've got a folded tadasana. So you've got the ribs pulled up, shoulders back. Okay, good. Now we're going to take that right knee. Oops. We're going to take the right hand on the inside. Turn to your left. Keep the front left knee directed forward. The back leg is strong as you push into the floor, as you rotate, keeping the breathing constant. And then you can take that left hand down, bend down onto the back knee. Keep the toes tucked as you lift from the rib cage. And now rising, take the arms up and lift, keep the, the pubic bone pressing forward and lengthen from the spine. Lift, now we'll take the right hand across and then turn and face back as you pull up from the ribs and your shoulders back and down. Breathing is steady. Breath. Okay, good. And now you can come back up, but this time take the hands behind and then exhale and bring the ribs right to the thigh as you extend the wrists out. Keep the wrists reaching. Keep pulling up into that left waist to pull the thigh back into the hip socket. You're breathing fully. And then you can breathe and lift the ribs, opening the chest. Okay, great. Now we're gonna take this left leg back and then you can take the right leg forward. And now just taking the hands to the knee, tuck the back toes under, lift from the rib cage, pubic bone tucks under, lengthen from the spine as you rise. Keep the back toes pressing and keep again, pressing the body forward as you open the ribs. Breath, pulling up from the pubic bone, the shoulders slide down, the gaze is high to lift the spine. And then you turn to your right, draw that right shoulder back as you lift. Breath, breath. Excellent. Okay, good. And then you can come right back to the center.
And now you can take the hands behind, take your inhale, lift the eyes, exhale, and extend out over that right leg. Get the wrist reaching out, you're gazing to the big toe. And the breath is steady. Pull in the abdominal wall on the exhale as you send the wrists over. Body is in contact with the thigh. Good. And now take that hand, the hands down on either side of the leg. Straighten the back leg and then turn to your left to come into a wide straddle. You're about a leg length and a half apart. Take the hands right underneath the, the uh, chin and then pull the bum bones back and lengthen through the inner thighs and lift the toes if you can. Spread the toes and keep the bum bones pulling back. The inner thighs are active. Now press the toes down. So you've got your bum back and then you're gonna walk over towards the right foot. Take both hands over there and lower, bend the elbows. Reach out from the chin so your spine is long. If you need to bend the knees, no problem. But just keep actively pulling the thighs up to tip the bum high, just like a downward dog tilt. And then you lift, come on back up, straighten the arms, come on over to the left, bending down if there's a bend. Keep reaching out with the chin, pulling up from the thighs. As the core pulls back, you keep reaching that chin out. Legs are active, steady breath. One more breath. Okay, now we're gonna walk the hands back in. Press the right hand under the chin, turn to your left and bring that left arm back. Opening the chest and then you can switch, press, turn, breathe in, draw the right shoulder back as you lift that right arm. Now take that hand down and walk both hands once more over to the right. Take the left hand in front of the right foot or on the inside arch side, and then turn and draw that shoulder back as you lift from the rib cage. Keep pulling up from the core. And then you can take that hand down, walk over to the other side, right hand on the front of the left foot. Turn, breathe in, lift, pulling up from the core as you lengthen. Keep the shoulder coming back. And then you can take that left hand down. Now we'll turn back towards the front and come back up on the back toes into the lunge and the heel is reaching back. But it's more of a, um, it's the heel reaches back as opposed to you lunging forward. Now then take the, um, we're gonna take the back knee down, keep the toes tucked under and then pull up from the core. Take your right hand up and then turn to your right. But this time you really pull up from the core. So it's not as much a turn to the right as it is a pull up to the front. Now turn the thumb down, palm faces back. Take that arm around and then press that palm into the back to get the shoulder to come back. But the whole time, keep your knee facing forward. Both knees opening. And then you can take that right hand down. Lift the legs, change legs. Take the right hand on the outside, right leg back, left leg forward, both hands on the inside. Get that back heel reaching back as you lift from the rib cage, back leg strongly reaching. Shoulders are sliding down, breathing constant. Now take that right hand down and then you pull up from the skin of the torso, turn to the left, keep pulling up from the rib cage, the shoulder coming back. Keep your breathing steady. Continue to pull up from the core here. Breathing. And then you can take that left hand down and now we'll take the left foot behind. And then from here, coming right into a standing kneel, you can take your left leg out to the side and then lift up from the right side, extend and triangle out over that side. Keep coming up and out from the right hip. Keep your shoulder back, breathing is steady. And then you can come down. Changing legs, take the right leg out, reaching, lengthen out from the left side. Fountain up and over, get a wonderful rise, breathing steadily. And then you can come on back, 
Great. Now take the hands down, come into tabletop position, and then um, come back into a kneeling position. And we'll come right into breath of joy. So you can come into your tall spine. We'll go for 27 pumps, three rounds, and get that Uddiyana Bandha pulling up, shoulders back, and you're squared in through your torso. Here we go, taking the arms to the side, breathing in. <laughs> And then relaxing the arms and again keep the rib cage back chest is open now 27 pumps is a good number to go for sometimes you can go for more but it's enough to develop some endurance and stamina in the respiratory muscles intercostals abdominal walls and um and you just it's a very good clearing for the gut as well because of the contraction coming in so 27 to 30 is plenty so we take the arms to the outside, breathing in. And then letting the arms drop. Good, we'll do one more round. Also, this is where we get to do like a seated Tadasana, noticing the chin is back, space between the ribs and the hips. So again, we don't have that posture of the head, chin coming forward. It's very much a drawing back, as I've mentioned before, like your head's on the headrest in the car. And here we go, breathing in. And then letting the arms rest. Take in three deep breaths. Keeping the space in the ribs. Excellent, one more breath. Okay, good, now we're gonna shift over to your left side. Now, if you can keep the uh, heel tucked under, please do. If it's a bit too much for the knee, then you can take the foot out to come into a, a, a twist. Now we come up nice and tall and then pull that heel in as snug and up to the waist as you can. Make sure there's no pain on the outside ligament of the knee here. And then lift from the rib cage, gaze up. That's it, you're gonna stay lifting from the low back and use your elbow bend to pull you to the front of the bum. Keep the shoulders back. The eyes will direct the spine a little higher. And this has also been proven to really elevate mood. So if you're ever noticing you're losing concentration or you're getting tired or the mood is going down, then look up. You can just pretend to be looking at something or you remembered something because that's the, also the uh, eye movement when you remember something. You look up to the left actually. And then you're coming back and you're tucking your chin, but you keep the tall spine. So you keep high in the bum bones and you breathe. Lifting and pulling up from your core. Okay, good. Now we're going to um, change legs by taking the top heel in, shift to your other side, and then you can take that right leg across and once again, get the heel as high up as you can. If you need to take your underside heel out to get the bum down, do that. So pulling in, wrap, lift, gaze up, bend the elbows to pull yourself up from your low back. Stay with your breathing. Dropping the bum bones. Good, and then on your next exhale, tuck the chin. Breathing deeply in and out through the nose constantly. Good, so this is like staff pose where you've got the tall back and the chin tucked to lengthen the back of the neck. One more breath. 
Beautiful. Okay, now you can uncross this leg and you're going to take the heel to the outside so it will be off the mat in your case. And if you need to get it on the mat, just turn to your left. Pull the right heel in tight, pull the toes back, and now you can extend out over that leg as you reach. Pull up from the side of the body as you extend. You've got this knee nicely pressed down. And if it's uh, too sensitive through the knee, then please do this. Take your heel out further so you can get more to the front of the bum and you'll get more of a reach out from your low back. So feel for the best way to send the chest forward and the toes pull back. Two more breaths. Keep that reach. One more full breath. Okay, here we go. Come on in. Now you can take this heel in, take the left, the opposite right foot rather out to the side, pull that left heel in, lift from the rib cage as you extend forward, pulling back, reaching. Come right up from the side of the waist, the chest, shoulders back as you pull the baby toe side back, lifting and reaching. Lengthening out. Breath. Two more breaths. Get the toes pulling back as you lengthen off the hip. Good. Here we are on the next inhale. Draw all the way back up. Now you can take that right heel in front and then taking the left heel so it comes right in front of the bumble, but the foot, the feet are apart. You're gonna take the left arm over and then press the back of the arm into the shin and extend your body over the leg and use the pressure of the arm to bend you forward. And then for those, if you can wrap, this is where you take the thumb behind and I'll roll around and you turn the shoulder forward. Now it looks really anti-yoga because you're all rounded. And then you grab on to the hand and you extend forward and you come back into that longer lock of Uddiyana. You get that reach forward. The chin does lift to extend you forward out of your back. And then you can breathe in, lift. Come all the way back up. Now you can take that left heel out and then taking the right foot in, get squared, take the arm over, reach, and either press the back of the arm or come into your wrap if you're a wrapper. And you reach forward, you pull the baby toe side back, get your extension forward. Lengthening from the spine, reaching, reaching, and then on the inhale, draw all the way back up. Bring both feet, knees bent in front, coming into tabletop position. Now you can have your hands right underneath the shoulders and we'll come into your tabletop lift. Or if it's too much, take the bum up. Keep the heels pressing into the floor and pull towards the front of the bum bones as you lift the ribs. Otherwise, you can extend the tailbone out, lift from the rib cage, keep on pressing into the feet as the head drops back. And again, press the inside feet. Breathing. Breath, breath. And then you can gently, slowly come down. And then from here, pull the knees up and press the knees together to come into a lift from your low back. Then you can extend the legs out, pull the shoulders back to get to the front of the bum bones. And if you need to keep a foot down for balance or both feet, I'd like you to come to the fronts of the bum bones. Now the heels are just even with the knees and you roll back. I'm grasping one hand and then you're pulling the shoulders back to get into a lower little boat, a lower abdominal work, more so than the mid abdominals. Now, then you can take your left hand behind the fingers turn in, right hand behind, keep the lift of the rib cage, 
Keep the elbows pressing back so you're not rotated out. Come on to the front of the bum bones. Breath, breath, breath. Stay to the front for four more breaths. Keep that Tadasana, so a mountain pose. You keep the lift of the ribs, space in between ribs and hips. Breathing steadily. And then you can let your heels down. Good, we're gonna take the heels, tuck them under to come into all fours position. And then you can walk your legs back and we'll come all the way to the floor. Press the tops of the feet down, feet are together. Take the hands alongside the body. Now the shoulders are going to move down towards the floor. Your thumbs move up towards the ceiling, palms out. And then you take an inhale and lift by pressing into the feet and lifting and letting the shoulders come back. The breathing is constant as you keep pressing the feet down and as you rise and the shoulders come back. And come for two more breaths. Keeping the eyes lifting as you breathe. And then you can take the hands alongside the body. Now you press the feet up off the floor and you pull the elbows back and you press them into the rib cage. And you lift the eyes, pull the chest forward. Keep the legs reaching out, 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 out. They are apart, of course. And you're keeping the elbows pressing in. Keep on pulling up from the rib cage as you pull the palms down and as the elbows come back. Breath. And then you can lower. Now bend the knees. Come on up to all fours position for cat round. Take the hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes under to stretch the feet. Take an inhale, lift the eyes. And then exhale and round spine. And then you can breathe in, lift, gaze up. And then exhale and round the spine. Breathe in, lift, gaze up. And then exhale and round. Excellent. And now you can come back and come on all the way onto your back. And you can bring the heels in close to the body. Now take the hands to the heels. So as you've noticed, we really finish with bridge. This is a finishing posture. And you're keeping the feet apart. Now you press into the feet and send the tailbone way out as the knees move towards each other. Now the backs of the arms press into the floor. The back of the head presses back at the tailbone high. Good, breathe deep into the lower abdomen. Actively pressing into the feet as the tailbone reaches out. And then you can slowly lower. Let the shoulders come wide. Okay, now we'll take the hands to the ceiling. And today I want you to interlace through the fingers and take the arms over to the right. Let both knees bend to your left. And you're just on the inside edge of the arch of that top foot. And get the arms coming way over to stretch through that left side waist. Nice deep, deep breathing. Arm really pull it across. And then breathe in, draw the arms up, exhale over to the other side. Breathing, good. You've got that underside elbow bending. Pull the arm well across. Breath. Breath. Good, and then breathe in. Now, on your own breath and time, we'll do this a few times. Go from side to side, bending the elbow across. Breathing in and out. Good. 
right, and finishing the side one more time. And then you can draw back to your center. Very good. Now from here, we'll come into either shoulder stand or coming into happy baby. I'll demonstrate happy baby. I'm gonna take the feet up, grabbing onto the feet and bending the knees to the outside. Now bend your right knee in more to tip you to your right, getting a stretch in through that right side. Good, and then come on over to the left. Press that left knee in. Good. Now come back to your center and then pull the feet over towards the head more. Coming to press the low back down more as the elbows bend and as the heels just reach over. Shoulders are back. Breathing steadily. Now see if you can straighten the legs and for those in shoulder stand, please come down to your plow. And else, as you reach the heels up, pull your toes back and doing like a modified plow that you reach the heels out. You lengthen through the backs of the legs. Now I'm holding on to the ankles. You may hold on to the feet and pull the toes down. And, um, but if you could have straight legs, that might mean grabbing on behind the legs. Keep the heels reaching out to the best position. On your exhale, you'll really pull the core in. And again, the toes are pulling back as you get that reach out through the heels. Okay, great. Now, everybody, take the legs wide and press the heels out. And now do little pulses out as you lengthen through the legs and you get that stretch right through the feet. You can hold on to the insides of the legs or if you can really stabilize with your core, let the arms come down to the sides. Keep the heels reaching out. And a couple more. Keep the heels reaching, toes pull back, stretch through the inner heels. And then you take the legs to the top. Now take the right foot in front and the left toes actually spread and they hold on to the heel behind and pull that heel in. So you forked your toes over the heel as you pull the legs in towards you. Now you grab on somewhere, wherever you can, and you pull the upper body towards you as you tighten in through the core to lift and the legs are lengthened as you reach. And then you can take the legs down and now switch. Fork the toes around the heel, lift the upper body, contract the core to get your lift. Lengthen through the backs of the legs, the shoulders are dropped. You keep the heels reaching. And then you can relax and let the legs bend and come all the way down. Then we lift the upper body and reach in between the legs, grab the feet, press the feet together, and then send the knees apart. You're pressing down really nicely in through your low back and you want to bend the elbows, tuck your chin to go into your breathing. Breathe in and out through the nose, keeping the breathing constant. Breath. And then you can lower the upper body, but keep the feet if you can. If you need to um, let them come apart to keep pulling in, please do. Send the knees away as much as you can. Good, couple more breaths. I'm still cupping the feet because my arms can reach there. I've got short legs. So, you know, it really depends on what you can get there. And then you release the heels and you come down. Okay. Now stretch the arms up overhead. Reach through the fingertips. Press the feet into the floor, drawing the tailbone down as you lengthen your spine. And then take the arms back down to the side of the body. We're going to come right into fish pose. So you can take your legs out, reaching, and then take your arms down, of course, overlapping the thumbs well under the torso. And then as you press into your elbows, lift. Come on to the back of the head as the legs reach, toes point and you keep the back top of the head in contact with the floor. There's not too much weight there. 
Most of the weight is in the elbows as you press the forearms down. And you keep that wonderful lift from the ribs. Breath. Excellent. One more breath. And then you can gently lower. Now, just release the hands and bend the knees and take the feet to the outside edges of your mat. Good. Now take the hands behind the head, interlace the fingers. Lift the head, tuck the chin, and breathe deep while you press the heels down into the floor. Stretching into the low back, and then you can gently lower. Keep the chin tucked as you do. And then once again, breathing in. And exhale, tuck the chin. Wonderful counter stretch after the fish pose. Notice that you're pressing the heels down. That will pin your low back down more. That will give you longer stretch from the upper and lower back. Breath, tuck the chin. And then you can slowly lower as you keep the chin tucked. And then release the arms to the side. Great. Now you can let your legs straighten and we'll come right into Shavasana. In this pose, all you do is soften. So there isn't any use of muscle to lengthen or be in a tall uh, abdominal wall. Nothing is working. So just let go. Let your feet roll out. Just be a big puddle. Feel into the effects on your body of all of the poses you've done. Feeling yourself release back. And do a little scan of the body. Scan to see if there's any area that you need to loosen. And reading from Mary Oliver, her poem, Mysteries, Yes. Truly, we live with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How grass can be nourishing in the mouths of lambs. How rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity, while we ourselves dream of rising. How two hands touch and the bonds will never be broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. Let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers. Let me keep company always with those who say, look, and laugh in astonishment and bow their heads. And you can continue to rest back in your Shavasana. Letting go. The next poem is prayer. May I never not <laughs> be frisky. May I never not be risque. May my ashes, when you have them, friend, and give them to the ocean, leap in the froth of the waves, still loving movement, still ready beyond else to dance for the world. That one's lovely. And this poem is entitled, Violets. Down by the rumbling creek and the tall trees, where I went traunt from school three days a week and therefore broke the record there were violets as easy in their lives as anything you have ever seen. 
or leaned down to intake the sweet breath of. Later, when the necessary houses were built, they were gone. And who would give significance to their absence? Oh, violets, you did signify. And what shall take your place? Violets by Mary Oliver. Take another minute to let go. And then as you come into your next in breath, take a deeper breath. And completely exhale. And then just wiggle your toes. And then point your toes, stretch the shins, and then pull the toes back, spread the toes. And again, point and spread them, pull back. One more time, point, and spread them, pull back. Lovely. Now take the right arm overhead, reach for the right arm and then stretch the left heel out, stretch diagonally through the torso, pressing that hand out, reach the left heel, and then soften both limbs into the floor. Take the right arm back down alongside the body. Take the left arm over. Reach out through that left arm. Keep the right heel out. Stretch the right heel. Spread the toes. Reach that left arm right through the whole torso. And then soften and let that arm come back down to the side of the body. Have your feet to the outside edges of the mat now. And then let your feet roll in and out and then really fast. Good. Now you can bend your knees. Take the heels just close to the bum and do a little flattening of your low back, a pelvic tilt. And then bend the knees up, lift the heels, pull them in nice and snug. And you can get wide and do a nice little rock side to side. And then you can gently roll to either side and draw right up to seated position. We'll sit for a moment in your tall, lifted, seated Tadasana. So you've got that space, ribs, hips, and you come into a moment where you feel into the intention you'd like to set for today. Good. In the final second here, just evoke the feeling tone of that intention. Feel it in your gut. And then come on back. And we'll bring our hands together and, as you know, bow in namaste. Have a fan namaste. Have a great day, you guys. Um, I shall see you in the morning. Um, take your first thing in the morning, heart rate. So I was saying yesterday, Virginia, that we will we'll take the resting heart rate first thing in the morning. 
because uh, tomorrow after the cardio for the uh, yoga strength, I'll have us do a recovery heart rate. And I want to see how quickly your heart rates come back down.